Hello, hello, how's everybody doing today? Come on in, come on in. My name is Thomas Brush, I make indie games for a living. And today's gonna be a fun day because I'm gonna talk to you about how me and my team make beautiful 3D games, but we kind of cheat. And I kind of want to share our cheat with you about how we make beautiful games really, really fast. Before we talk about that, guys, I do want to let you know that today's live stream and this week's live stream is a very special week. This week's all the live streams are sponsored by my online course, Full Time Game Dev. This is not a small course. This is a massive course. This is a 30 hour premium course um, and content keeps getting added. And the reviews for the program are incredible. Basically the reason why my students love this program, I have over 3,000 students worldwide. The reason why students love this program is because I teach everything I've learned in the last decade of becoming a full-time game developer. That includes securing funding from publishers, securing funding from Kickstarter, and this is six figures of funding before I even finish my game. And I'm gonna teach you how to do it. How to hit the Steam front page, how to uh, reach out to press, reach out to YouTubers, get coverage, for your indie title. And more importantly, this is the best part, I guess the most important part, how to make games, right? So I teach C Sharp, uh, Photoshop, um, how to make a 3D game using no code, how to make a 2D game using a lot of code. So I teach it all. So if you're interested in joining this program, you're gonna learn how I did all this crap. And the best part is it's 50% off right now, but today only, today only for this live stream, this live stream, there are only five codes available for this live stream. Yesterday the codes sold out, those five sold out. So if you wanna get today's five codes, be sure to check those out. They usually sell out by the end of this stream. So anyway, click below if you're interested. Anyways guys, I will see you inside of Unity. We're gonna talk about that secret about how to make a beautiful 3D game, what me and my team do. Let's go. By the way, guys, feel free to download my free 2D game kit below. It's totally free, it's my treat to you. I used this exact 2D game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days, and then I got to play it in front of his subscribers, which was really awesome. Um, so download that, use it however you want. It's my treat to you, yeah, okay. All righty, yes, yes, yes. One of you said Thomas has 3,000 students and he's selling an online program. It's very lucrative. It is very lucrative. I like to be honest with you guys and disclose, yeah, things are going really, really well for my online program. But for me personally, I always feel a little bit guilty when things are going really well with the course and the program and we're bringing in good money. Obviously, it's an investment for you guys too. So it's helping 3,000 students worldwide. Um, so it's helping a lot of people, but it is a profitable business, just FYI. And so it's really important to me to actually live stream and show you guys how I make games and how I'm currently making games. I'm the teacher who wants to do the thing while he's teaching it. I wanna do both. Um, so anyway, I wanna tell you really quick about how we're making, honestly, this game looks beautiful. Like Father is looking incredible right now. I wanna show you how we're making it look like this, okay? So I'm gonna mute the audio really quick and just hit play here. All righty then, so let's go over here. So we, we were working on this yesterday. How, how on earth did we make it look so pretty? I mean, how, how, did, how did this happen, right? I mean, this looks really good in my opinion. And that's not because I'm the only person working on it, so I can say that and not be you know, a, a cocky jerk. It's my team, my team is doing an incredible job. Why, like what are we doing here to make this look so pretty? Well, let's pause it and take a look at all the things we, we've got going on, okay? There's first a focal point to any artwork you're working on in 3D. You need something that is sort of focal to, when you're thinking about marketing in particular, what makes your game really pop? What is the thing that the player should focus on? Well, with a first person shooter game, it's gonna immediately be the gun, okay? And they're gonna follow their eye to the crosshair and they're gonna look at whatever the crosshair is looking at. Okay, so I think the gun is first and foremost the most important thing, okay? The gun is custom. So this started out with me doing a sketch um, in Photoshop for Felipe, and then Felipe 
went in. He's my modeler, by the way, my 3D modeler. He's a huge asset to the team. Incredible, incredible guy. He's working on the game right now. Um, he modeled this, and it's a low, you know, it's a pretty low poly model. But I told him, I said, you know, we, we want this thing to be glorious. We want this gun to be absolutely glorious and very, very unique. Um, so the gun was custom. So that took, you know, I think maybe a day or two of Felipe's full time. But what about the rest of the game? What about all of this? Well, a, you know, a ton of this is custom models from Felipe, like this drawbridge here. This drawbridge is a custom model from Felipe that he worked on specifically for this map. But what about the stones? What about the trees? What about even these textures here? Did Felipe make these by hand? No. All this stuff is assets that Felipe found that we purchased. It was worth our money because ultimately, you know, we go, okay, do we want to use up 40 hours of Felipe's time? He's paid as an employee. Or do we want to use up $100 on assets? What, what do we want to do as a studio? What's the smartest decision? Well, buying the assets was the smartest decision. We didn't buy an asset for this gun because I want that gun to scream, this is father. This is uniquely father. So that's why we spent custom time or our own time on a custom model. Whereas trees and, and rocks, those are things that it's like, no, no, no. We don't need to worry too much about that. So we got those from the asset store. Okay, so these trees here, these are all from the asset store. And the important part to note about assets, and these rocks are as well, assets are great because they're sort of made for Unity. So instead of going to like Turbo Squid and buying FBX models, we buy asset packs from the Unity asset store because they're ready to go. These trees aren't prefabbed and like placed in the scene, even though they are prefabs. They're actually painted using the terrain tool. And the terrain tool here allows us to paint these trees seamlessly onto our world, okay? So if I wanted to, I could just paint a ton of trees right here on our terrain and then walk on over to our terrain. Let's go over there and take a look. And suddenly we have this massive forest that was recently, you know, this blank field. These assets are really valuable because they're set up to be painted, right? Also, they have LODs attached to them, okay? And those LODs, what do they do? That's a level of detail. They slowly change to be less detailed. And then eventually, they call out. They're gone, okay? So as the camera goes further and further away from these assets, they automatically start to go down in quality. So that's our secret. Now, the final bonus secret that I wanted to share with you guys, this one is something I'm really excited about, is utilizing post-processing and fog, okay? Post-processing and fog is, uh, like, I would say the most important, or the, the quickest cheat code to getting beautiful, beautiful um, artwork. Sorry, I'm reading the chat. Um, so let's see here. We've got fog here. What happens if we turn this fog off? Not nearly as moody. And look how kind of crappy it looks. It's like, wait a second. You tricked me, Thomas. Exactly. <laughs> That's what game development is. It's, it's using magic and trickery to make things look beautiful. Now, the truth is, is that the game we all play, life, it's using the same tricks. We're all, we all have global fog around us. The atmosphere makes things look a lot more moody. I don't know why we perceive it as moody, but the foggier things are, the more depressing, the more moody they are. So what happens if I turn off the post-processing effects? Well, first off, I want to turn off, actually, I wanted, I wanted to show you, I want to turn off the skybox. What happens if we turn off the skybox? Okay, it's just bland gray. Suddenly things aren't nearly as cool, okay? What happens if we turn off the post-processing effects? So all we gotta do is, I believe it's a, it's called Global Profile Post, there it is, Post Processing Volume. Watch, watch what, this is crazy. Watch what happens when we turn this off. Look at this. This looks like a cheap 90s game. Or like early 2000s. That's what this looks like. We turned off the fog and the post processing effects and it's all already pretty crap. I mean, it's just amazing what the small things, the little things really do for your game, okay? 
So guys, the cheat codes are use Unity assets when needed, make custom models to make your game pop. They, know that certain things are gonna make your game pop and really stand out. The, people, the things that people are gonna focus on, you need to focus on those things as well. So weapons, make them look custom, right? Very unique weapons. Character design, very unique custom models. But trees, rocks, not, not necessarily. You could probably find a realistic rock or a stylized rock on the Unity Asset Store and you'll be fine, okay? And then final, the final cheat code is use post-processing effects and fog to make your game really pop, okay? All right, so what we're gonna do today is uh, move into, well, getting this game ready for a demo. We're gonna showcase this at an event and I can't say which event it is. I don't think I can. Um, so, sorry, I'm thinking here. We're getting it ready for an event. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up this map inside of Photoshop, okay? There we go. And this map here, and by the way guys, for those of you who are just joining us, we're working on Father right now. And just remember you can use those five codes below to join my program for 50% off. It's called Full-Time Game Dev, over 30,000 students. 30,000, 3,000 students worldwide. And I teach everything I've learned in the last decade of making a full uh, full-time game dev career. I'm gonna teach you how to do it too. Um, so there's only five codes available. Those usually sell out. Click below, keep the stream going, but click below to take a look at the program, see if it's something you're interested in. Okay, so we're looking at our Sodom's Hollow level design. This thing is pretty big. There's a lot of details here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna duplicate this scene because Felipe is currently working on this scene right now as I'm doing this live stream. I don't wanna mess with his work. And you can't like, we can't push to GitHub um, a binary uh, file, right? And in this case, Sodom's Hollow, our level here is, is a binary file. So I can't tweak it and then and tweak it at the same time he's tweaking it. It's not gonna work. We're gonna get merge conflicts. So what I'm gonna do is duplicate Sodom's Hollow. So let's go ahead and type it in, Sodom's Hollow in my project settings here. There it is. I'm gonna duplicate it and I'm gonna call this Sodom's Hollow Thomas's Working copy. The reason we can do this is I can actually create a new sort of folder inside of this window. Just going to be an empty game object. And this is going to be Thomas's working changes. And I'm going to zero out the position here. And then anything I do to this scene, I can just drag into this, copy and paste this over once we've pulled Felipe's changes. That's basically all we need to do. Okay. The Amazon Lord of the Rings show looks awful and I'm depressed from Tim Holly. Tim, you're supposed to love it. Yeah, I don't, I, I saw the trailer. I thought, man, this looks like a CGI mess. That's honestly what I thought. There, was, there wasn't a lot of charm. Um, okay, so what we want to do is let's open up the Photoshop file and just slowly start thinking of things that we need to start adding. Well, right off the bat, as we wind up this path, you can see it, Adam Smith, who was once an intern of mine, and now I hired him for contract work to do level design and actually featured his game on this channel. He says, a long winding path leading into a central clearing. Trees are on the path and you can see some of the trees have bodies. Okay, so we need to put some hanging bodies here. So I believe it's right here. This is the path. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some hanging bodies, okay? So I think what I wanna do is let's go to our trees here and see if we have a tree that'll allow us to put a hanging body hanging from it. Um, if that's not the case, what we might wanna do is some sort of like pull or something. Uh, so let's see, edit trees. Let's find our trees here. And just look through our trees. We got this one here, that's kinda cool. Um, we might need to put it like right here. Let's see here. I don't know, man. I think it might work actually. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, let's really quick, I need to find the right tree. It's this one here, edit tree, tree to autumn. Okay. So, 
could maybe even this one, this birch. Would that work? We could probably put the uh whoa. Whoa. What? Where am I? <laughs> I think we might be able to make this birch tree work, but I'm gonna make it bigger. So two by two by two. And let's see if we can put that hanging body right about right here, okay? All right, so this birch tree is gonna be in Thomas's working changes. Uh, and then we're also gonna put that hanging body. There it is. We already have this ready to go, which is pretty fun. Um, so we're gonna zero out its position inside of this birch tree actually. There he is but move him back out of the position because we just wanted to zero his position out and let's put his body sort of hanging in this tree. I think it needs to be like three by three by three. Pretty big tree to justify the ability to hold this body, okay? All right, let's see here. That's actually way too big. How about 2.4 by 2.4 by 2.4? And then bring the hanging body near the tree here. Let's make sure we have a capsule collider on it. Is there a capsule collider? Yes, there is. Okay, cool. So the hanging body will interact with that capsule collider. So we've got this hanging body here. Let's go ahead and jump on over to, let's, let's actually bring the character controller to where our camera is. So, so right about here and then go to game object, align with view, zero out its rotation so that he falls right, eh, let's see here, double check something. There we go, okay. So there's our hanging body. Pretty horrifying, to be honest. And he's just hanging from this birch tree. Awesome, I, I actually really, I like that, that's cool. Is Tomas in the chat, or Thomas? I, could, I say Tomas, because I think it's Tomas. Or did my video go live today? I think my video went live today. Did I have a video that went live today, guys? I like to check and make sure things are uploading properly. Anyway, I'll let that load. Okay, so we've got our hanging body, so that's good to go. So let's add a little check mark to make ourselves feel good. Um, the more bodies you see hanging from trees. Okay, so kind of, we're almost done here. So what we're gonna do is actually take this hanging body here. We're gonna create an empty object Empty game object, we would call this hanging body tree, okay? Um, we're gonna just put it right here and then we can put these, the body and the tree inside of the hanging body tree. And then we can uh, stick it inside of our prefabs here. I'm just gonna put it in the objects, or no, nature. There we go, now we have a hanging body tree and as we go up this path, we're gonna see more hanging bodies. So one here and then maybe one here as well. I think that's all I really wanna do. I don't wanna to get too, I love following Adam's designs. Adam's level designs are really great and I wanna make sure I stick with them. But me and Felipe, as we're building this level, we've told Adam, we've said, you know, we're probably gonna take some liberty here. And so I think more than two is just too much for me. So I think two bodies is just fine. The rope itself, man, this thing is thin. So I need to be able to see a little bit more. It's just a box collider uh, or a box renderer. Um, so we can do 1.6 by, yeah, yeah. So let's do two by, or two by two. Yeah, there we go. Try that out and take a look. Okay, so that looks fine. So I think two, two hanging bodies is good. Um. So there's the uh, other hanging body. Boom, boom, okay, good. I like it, I think it looks cool. All right, so this is good, check. One, two, one, two, there we go. Let's make our way up. Central clearing, no danger when you first enter whatever statue. No, 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 we're not gonna do any of that. Felipe is working on this right now, I believe. Okay, so we need to create, okay, we've got a gate system, so check mark here, that's created. It's not locked. This is locked, so we need to work on that door. And then there's a key, let's see here. There's a key bro lock inside of a coffin, okay. Yeah, 
So I think what Felipe had in mind versus Adam, because Adam, you know, any guys, anytime you're working on a level of design, it's gonna change. Like it's going to change. So um, let's see what Felipe decided to do here. I believe he's got like, yeah, yeah, boards. Okay, sweet. So the key is hidden under here. So we have some boards here that cannot, can they be picked up? They can, okay, very good. So I believe there's an, oh, very cool. So there's an orange key that's going to be placed in here. So I'm gonna type in key, and I believe that we have a key variant ready to go. Hmm, there it is. Gordon, there it is door key variant. We're going to put it right here. And I believe it's got everything inside of it that it needs to work. Okay. So we have this cool light and it's going to change colors based on the door key. Okay. So let's go to our key manager. This is a script written by my team member, AJ. Let's go to the, the key manager and create a new key. Okay. All right. So let's see here. We have Six keys available, we have blue key, orange key, red key, silver key. Um, I don't think I need to create a new key, but let's let's see here. We'll probably uh, duplicate this one. Wait, 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 where'd it go? Duplicate array element. It's not doing it. Maybe I need to set it to seven. And then, yeah, yeah. And then we'll, what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this uh, level one, or how about Sodom's Hollow Orange Key? Just to be sure, I, I, I think we need to have it specific to Sodom's Hollow. Game Rat says, Thomas, can you let me know why full-time game dev is better than YouTube videos? Well, I won't tell you, I'll let my students tell you. If, they're, if you're a student in the chat, uh, let Game Rat know why my program is better than just watching YouTube videos. If, if I have any students in the chat, feel free to offer up your opinion. Okay, guys. So let's, let's go ahead and change the key color here. Um, I know it's going to be this color here. We can change the, this is so cool. So basically we change different variables here with our key manager and those will be applied to this key and all we got to do is from the drop down menu choose orange key, right? So this saves us a lot of time. Uh, UI is going to be key orange. And now all we got to do is say, what key is this? Why, my friend, it is the Sodom's hollow orange key. You can't see it. There we go. So that's what we're working on. Okay. All right. So that should be good. I think we're okay. You guys want to uh, check it and take a look? So we have this key that you can collect here. And I believe we'll be able to see it. Yeah, you can see the glow, which is really cool, actually, coming from underneath these boards. So I really love what Felipe did here. And it, honestly, instead of creating a one single model for the, um, like a grave or um, a coffin, Felipe was like, let's save time. Let's just put boards on top of it. And I think that's great. I love saving time and I love saving money. All right, so let's go to game object alignment with view. And that's just going to align our character controller to the camera so that when we hit play, it'll drop directly from the camera. Okay, so this is obviously incorrect here. Um, but over here, let's take a look. Look how cool this is. Like, that looks really cool. So we can just sort of lift these up and move these over. Collect our key. Isn't that cool, guys? So now we have the key. Hey, the lighting effects are still remaining, so we need to go to the D key. I hate when this happens. It's like every time I'm, I get a, a prefab completed, like I've, I spent so much time getting the keys completed. They break. <laughs> so let's see if we can move this. Door key light. There's the lighting effects, good. And there's a pickup light there as well. What is that? 
All right, let's test it again. And by the way, let's change this here so it's not locked. This gate shouldn't be locked. So this is not going to be locked. Um, so let's hit play here. That is a chef's kiss. So can I collect the key by just walking over it? Probably. I think I need to initially constrain those. Because I don't want to be able to walk all over them and they just fly everywhere. Give me that key. Give me. There we go. Son of a... It's still not freaking... Okay, hold on. Well, first off, let's get these all to be um, initially constrained. So what we can do is we can do... Um, there should be a variable initially constrained. Let's see if that fixes it. Thomas, do you believe AI is going to help us create art? Of course. Always, 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 always. Don't be afraid of art or AI. It is the future. You just kind of learn to embrace it. It's scary, though, that's for sure. So look, that's pretty cool. So you just have to pick these boards up and move them and collect the key. I like that. That's a really fun puzzle, Felipe. Good job, buddy. OK, um, so obviously this light is not being removed. So what I'm going to do is actually pause and try and figure out what's going on here. So this light is, it's the pickup light. So we have the door key light, but we also have a pickup light. We don't want that. So if we go to the door key variant, we're actually going to disable the pickup light entirely. We don't need that. We have the door key light. That's all we need. Hey, so now it's, it's yeah, okay. So now it's more colored. Okay, so that's orange. If we had set it to blue, it would just be blue. If we hadn't removed that light just now, we would have a mix of this orange and blue and you wouldn't get an idea of what color the key is. So this is the orange key. Look at that. Okay, orange key, hello. Grab it. All right, good, the light went away. And then we will be able to go and use this orange key all the way over, if I was throwing a football, all the way over there, okay? So what we're gonna do is now head on all the way over here. And again, guys, if we just go into Photoshop, we can take a look at the map. Let's put a check mark there, mother effer. Good job. We still need to do that. And this, hey, what's that key? Ah, yes, the key's here. Son of a bee. Okay, so what we need to do is actually go all the way over here. And the key is that, or the, uh, the key will be used for this. Oh, no. <sighs> Gotta create a new door. Fly Time Game Studio just is a new student. Welcome, awesome. Hi, I'm a new student currently going through the class. Thomas, Thomas, in my opinion, does a great job showing and explaining why and when you would do certain things. No matter your entry level to the program, it's definitely worth the investment to set yourself apart from potential game devs. Yeah. Okay, cool, thank you. That means a lot. Um, let's see here. So we need to create a door here. This is going to be such a pain. And this is this is just the way things go, my friends. Um, this door, mm, it's going to need a lot of things. But it's, it's, current, it's going to be locked, OK? So what we want to do here is we want to find a door that opens the same way. We want to copy that door over and then paste it into this scene, all right? So I'm going to go to a new level here. And obviously, you know, this is a prefab stored in my prefabs folder. We have so many prefabs, I don't even know where to look or what it's called. So I actually find it. Whoop! Wait a second. Yeah, yeah we're good. Um, let's see here. We, I've just remembered, we're in a separate scene here. I can actually just copy these changes over uh, to. Yeah, we're not, I'm not going to worry right now. We're going to copy all these changes over once we're done with this scene. Anyway, let's go into Edenfell here. And I'm going to copy over a door and paste it in. While I do that, I do want to let the people who are just showing up know. I know I, I tout this a lot, guys. When I get a, when I have a sponsorship slot for my live streams, I do like to do these uh, these ad reads um, for the video. So let's go and grab this door here. But yeah, I just want to let you guys know that those of you just joining us, there are probably, I'm not sure, maybe three keys left for full-time game dev, which is my program where I teach you everything I've learned in the last decade of making indie games and doing it full time. 
Um, I have over 3,000 students with this program. It's a massive 30 hour program. You're gonna learn how to secure funding from publishers, from Kickstarter, and you could do that before you even finish your game, which is crazy. I know that sounds crazy. I can't make any promises, but that's what I did. I've done it multiple times. Um, ki two Kickstarter campaigns, two publisher agreements. Um, I'm gonna copy this over and paste this in. But anyway, it's 50% off right now. There's probably three codes left. If you wanna join the program, check it out below. And we're only, we're only doing these kind of sale events, um, these kind of live stream sale events for like three more days. Um, so be sure to check it out if you're interested. And these live stream codes do delete at the end of today. Okay, and they'll probably just sell out by the end of the stream, to be honest. So feel free to check it out. And if you're a student, let us know in the chat. Okay, let's go back to Sodom's Hollow for testing. And I appreciate you guys, as always, listening to my ad reads. It really means a lot to me that you're willing to sit through them. Okay, where am I? Let's type in Sodom's Hollow. They support the channel. And honestly, guys, they support this game. A lot of the income that comes from full-time game dev, my program, goes directly into this game. Felipe, Felipe will tell you that. <laughs> He's my full-time 3D modeler. So he gets a paycheck because, well, we also have an online program in addition to game sales. Where is it? Sodom's Hollow. Where, what did I call it? There it is. Thomas's working copy. Okay, so we copied that door. So now what we're going to do is paste this door. And, you know, it's not, it's not my favorite thing ever to have to constantly create new doors. I like to be able to reuse doors. But I think this is okay because this is a shed here. So I'm going to paste it. Let's paste it inside the shed. Um, so I think I can edit paste as child. There we go. And I'm going to bring this door over here. And the first thing I want to do is just make sure this door works. Okay. So we're going to take this door over because all, what we need to do is we need to copy all of the functionality of this door over to this uh, wooden door. Okay. So we have this door here, just like this. There we go. And I'm gonna take this wooden door and I'm actually just gonna disable it for now. And we're gonna test this out. We're gonna test this door out. I believe this one is locked. No, it's not, okay. But we can hit play here and let's just take a look at it. Make sure it works. First says, Thomas Brush, how are you doing today? I feel really, really good today. I'm having a great day. It's been a super busy day for me. Um, my studio, what we do, okay, it's, this is blocked. Okay, so we need to make sure that we remove the blockage. Why, why are you blocked, you mother effer? Hold on. Um, my studio, what we do, we do a lot of stuff. And so I've been really busy today. I've been um, doing online, online content for my YouTube channel, videos and stuff. Um, also today was a lot of what was I working on today? Taxes, a lot of taxes stuff today. I've been dealing with, you know, they never stop. They never stop, they always want more. And so I paid a lot of tax money last year, over six figures in tax money, like that, in December last year, I paid it all. And they come back to me this month and they say they want $10,000 more. So it just never ends. Um, but that's why you have a CPA, but it's still, it's hard with a CPA even. So it's just been, Pretty awful. Okay, so let's see here. We have a jammed object and it says none. Oh, it, ah, there's the, it's this ticked and it says jammed. Do you think that Apple is, a good, is good for game dev because I want to buy a new M1 iMac? No, I wouldn't do that. You can if you want. If you like the style of an iMac and you're like me, because I had an iMac for a long time for game dev. If you're like me and you just care about how things look, <laughs> I like aesthetic. Aesthetic is important to me when I'm working. Um, there we go. Okay, it works. Okay, that's, you know, I do wonder if I could just get away with using that, that door. Felipe would be so mad. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't do that. Um, let's get rid of this door frame. We don't need this. Yeah, Felipe would be really mad at me, so we're not going to do that. I don't want to get in trouble. So let's see here. What we want to do is we want to bring over a new mesh, okay? So there's a couple things. Um, let's first find that, that, that mesh. So it's this, 
There it is, wood shack door. I'm actually gonna unpack this prefab. No, I'm not. I'm not gonna unpack it. I'm gonna paste that wood shack door right there. There it is. And we're gonna put it inside of this door here. There we go. Okay. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna position it all the way over to the edge. Okay. Now, we need to rotate it around. So it's like this. There we go. Yay! And it's gonna open. Well, Cracker Jacks, hold on. No, we're good. Okay, let's let's go back in time. So what we want to do is we want to position it exactly where the other door is, and all we got to do is swap out that door. Okay. So easier said than done, right? Because we're at a weird position here. Let's turn on uh, the lighting. No, that's not gonna help. Sorry, I'm having trouble seeing where I'm at right now. Okay, there we go. Just like that. And then let's see if we can scooch over. Yeah, I think we're good. Um, so if the door opens, guys, it'll look like this. Or like this. See that? So I think we're good. Um, the, the next thing we want to do is just remove the actual door mesh. Okay. And the handles, the knobs, all that stuff. We're gonna remove the mesh renderers entirely. The lock we wanna keep, but we don't need any of that crap either. Um, so the lock is about the only thing we're, we're gonna worry about. I think what we wanna do with the lock is we want some sort of chains on it maybe. Um, but, but before we do that, we have this mansion door here. There's a lot of colliders on this that we need to clean up. Um, so it's really hard to see. I don't know why I can't see any wireframes. It's really hard to see. No, oh, yeah. It's just hard to see. Okay, anyway, let's uh let's position it over. What is up there? Okay, I think that's good. What about that? Okay, I think we're good. So we'll just position it over here, over here. And all I want to do right now is get this lock looking right okay so we have this lock here and again we're going to be using the same locks over and over and over our game i don't love the lock this, the way this lock looks i really don't uh but we're trying to get this game done for a demo so that looks fine so we have these these locks on this door and now we need to think about where would we position this so that the player it's like clear as day that this is the locked door I think something like this is fine. It's not pretty though, honestly. So something like that is good. And I, I think maybe we could take one of the chains from the gate, this right here, take that chain. And if you don't love me now, and never love me again, What is it? I still can't hear you. If you never love me again, I can still hear you saying you'll never break the chain. Paste it in, zero it out. There it is. Okay, so we're gonna, it, I don't really like that to be honest. I wonder if we can like rotate it and make it look good. Huh. We could probably like squash it so that it's sort of wrapping around the wood or something. I don't know. It's not, it's not great. And this is just because I don't think we need a chain. <laughs> so let's break the chain and put that uh, lock about right there. And that's, that's fine with me. Okay. Um, Y'all want to at least t take a look and see. Well, actually, let's let's take a look at our colliders really quick. We have a couple things here. We have a box collider, and it's it's definitely not wide enough. So let's go to perspective mode. No, isometric mode. Rotate around so that it's nice and straight. 
and then drag that box over like this. We don't want the player to have any ability to get through, so nice and wide. And one more thing, guys. We got some weird box colliders here. Hey, that why does that have a mesh collider on it? It really shouldn't. Uh, maybe it maybe it needs one. I don't know. You never really know why you did something, you know. So you just sort of trust your previous self. I don't know why it has a collider on it. Um, then we also need to have yes, door direction triggers. So these little friends, they just tell us which direction we are. So I'm actually good with those. So let's hit play. I just want to make sure this door works. If it works, then we'll create a new prefab out of it so that we can use this in other places. Okay. Good. Okay. So what is that? Oh, pff. we don't want that. <laughs> Let's get rid of that door frame really quick. I can still hear you saying, you never break the chain. All right, fellas. Is Felipe in the chat? Felipe. Guys, let's give a round of applause to my entire team for showing up in the chat. And yes, they are my team. I was told in a social media post, you should say our team. No, it's mine. It's my team. And they know that. So we're going to disable this mesh renderer here and the mesh collider. And we should be good. Um, and it's safe. <laughs> hey, uh, can Gordon, can you remove the pornography, please? Thank you. I just am so proud to be graced by Love Face XYZ, which is probably a 13-year-old hanging out in our chat. No offense to any of you who are 13. It's just, you know, whatever. Okay, so this is fine. I think that uh, eventually we would want some kind of chain or, like, lock something here. We're not going to worry about that, Felipe. Um, TGG is 12. Okay. So once you're 13, though, it'll be a problem. Um, so that works. Wait. No, it doesn't. We need this to be over here. <laughs> so these locks will actually be positioned. Why are these not allowing me to, to move them properly? Hold on. There we go. Man, my computer's slow. Something's going on, guys. Whoa. Was it Love Face? My computer's really slow. Unity's rendering something. Okay, we're good. All right. So here we go. Let's hit play and take a look. Felipe, I was bragging about you. And by the way, Felipe, we're, I'm not working in the scene. Uh, this this is a duplicate scene, just so you don't freak out and you know panic like you usually do. I'm kidding. Felipe is a very cool-headed kind of guy. Okay, so those are over there. Uh-oh. So we might need to rotate the door around. There it is. No, Felipe's a level-headed, very talented 3D modeler. All right, so this is going to be called not mansion door, but shed door. And we can select it and then just drag it on in. I'm gonna put it inside the doors prefab folder. There we go, let's put it in there. It's just rotated around. Uh, what was it originally? It was 90, so it would be negative 90. Hey, there we go. And then we'll pull it on over. I can't see. I almost want to put the, make the directional light just really bright right now. That looks really cool. 
hey Felipe, what do you think? Um, that's pretty cool. Anyway, let's uh, move this on over and just pull it over here. I can't see. Maybe it's because my studio lights are on right now. I really can't see. How do I fix this? I, I don't know why, but I can't see and I'm, everything is generally lit pretty good. So I don't know. Anyways, so that's good. What do you think, Felipe? And we'll just drop it down a little bit so it's lined up with those hinges. And if you don't love me now, you will never love me again. Save. And we're going to lock the door. Hold the door! Speaking of TV shows, my team will love this. I'll say it again. You ready, Gordon? Gordon, you ready? Mandalorian sucks. Okay. Locked is true, and we're going to make it have the Sodom's Hollow Orange Key. Hector's quoting Greta Thunberg again. <laughs> how dead. Look how bright it is. I feel like I'm in heaven. Obviously, we'll, we'll bring it back down. Okay, so there's our lock. Yeah, it doesn't really work um, it visually, but I'm okay with it for now. We just, I just want the functionality to be working. Uh, and Felipe, we'll, what I'm gonna do is once you're done and you've pushed everything, I'm gonna go in and uh, update all this stuff so you don't need to worry about it. So, you know, the, the, the dialogue is off for one. So um, door jammed dialogue, we're gonna change it to door locked dialogue. There we go. So it's locked by a golden key or a golden lock or something. Uh, what's next? Something was wrong. Oh, <laughs> the light. Let's just let's fix the light. Save it out, Harry. I. That's when I realized that I probably wouldn't get along with any of you in real life. Uh, because everybody likes gaming. They love playing games. They love the Mandalorian. They like Star Wars. And I'm like, I don't like any of that stuff. Like I, yesterday I was on the edge of my seat. I was on the edge of my seat and I, I had a glass of vodka. I was watching TV and I was like cheering. I was cheering. I was cheering. And me and my, my wife were high-fiving. We were smiling. We were laughing. We were watching Love is Blind. That's that's my life. So I know now, and you all know that we are not friends. None of us. We would not get along. <laughs> um. Okay. So let's let's try this whole key puzzle out. Okay. Kyle says that show is so good. <laughs> it's hilarious. I love that show. And you know, it spurred on some great conversations with me and my wife. We were talking about what would we do and why did we get together and because we, we we've been married uh well together basically since we were in high school and so we just have and i told her i said you know kelsey we're like completely different person um unity just crashed but you know you're taking a stride we're like completely different people um so we're essentially married to totally different people than who we originally got married to which is definitely true. I mean, if you look at pictures, we're totally different. Does anybody feel that way with your spouse? Like, it's like, whoa, we are totally different than who we married. And so in a way, marriage is kind of unfair if you go wayward and you're totally different than who you married. Uh, fortunately, me and my wife, we sort of changed along with each other and we're like better people now for it. Uh, hopefully that none of, nothing crashed and I didn't lose any data. 
let's take a look at this door here. Hey, Slot Terry. Uh, the dialogue. Let's take a look at the dialogue. It's locked good. Thomas, do you think Shane and Natalie will get married? Of course Shane and Natalie are going to get married. Shane really, really loves Natalie. Shane is a good... He seems like a good guy. Um, I like Shane a lot. I'd be friends with Shane. I'm also as good at baseball as Shane. Okay, let's snag this key. I got the key, Harry. And let's run into the shed and see if this works. Okay, inside the shed, we're gonna find out what is inside the shed. I definitely don't want this table to be movable or breakable. It is, okay. And that's that's not your fault, Felipe. Um, it's just a, if we're gonna put the, like an ax on this shed here, and I believe that's where the ax is, right? Let's take a look. Then I don't want people to be able to break the, the door. What's in here? Small shack owned by the ground keepers of the cemetery to the south. Entrance is locked, Harry, with the key being in the cemetery in an open grave. Inside the shack is a woodcutter's axe that you can pick up and wield. So we'll take this. Looks like awesome, Felipe. It's kind of like they, they've been cutting up bodies. I like that. So we're going to turn off pushable. We're going to remove breakable object and pushable object from this. Sure, nav mesh, mesh obstacle is fine. These friends, they can be, I think they just need to be placed a little bit down. Let's take a look at the box lighter here. We're gonna move the box lighter up here a little bit like that. Actually, let's go inside of the, oh, we don't have that, it's not a prefab. Um, we need to make prefabs out of those, Flippy. So I'm gonna delete those. Who is Shane? You guys don't want to know. You do not want to know about Shane. Shane is a, is a potster. No, Shane is really nice actually. And he, you know, he's, you know, they, you got Barnett from last year and then you got Shane from this year. It's like the, the, like the dreamy sort of, uh, funny jock, right? And they're always like the star of the show. And then they end up with like a million subscribers on, on Instagram or followers or whatever. Okay, so uh, the the pickup for the axe, or it's a knife. It's really going to be called a knife pickup variant. We've already created this, thank God. We have a knife pickup variant, so we're going to put it right here. And I'm actually not going to have it rotate. And I'm also I'm going to move this into Thomas's working changes. Same is true with the whole entire graveyard shack. That's going to be in Thomas's working changes. Don't you love on Windows you can't scroll down? In Unity you have to hold. On Mac you can scroll down. Uh. By the way, those of you just joining us, just remember, today is a very special week. It really is because uh, full-time game dev is 50% off just for these live streams and only five codes are available. And it's going to last for another three days. Um, but today, there's like two codes left. So if you want to join the program, snag those two codes. Yesterday, um, they sold out before, I think, half of the live stream. So if you want to join the program and learn everything I've learned in the last decade of becoming a full-time game developer, I have over 3,000 students, incredible reviews. You can just click the reviews. Actually, one of my students just recently became a full-time game developer. He raised over $100,000 on Kickstarter using my method. Um, so that was really, really, that felt really good. Um, but if you want to check that out, you're going to learn everything I've learned in the last decade from code, illustration, making 3D games with no code, um, doing marketing, um, that's reaching out to publishers, reaching out to press, reaching out to YouTubers, getting YouTubers to play your game. Guys, I've done all of it, and I'm going to teach you how to do it. It's a full-time game dev, and it supports, obviously, the development of this game, but it also supports you guys. Um, how many of you are in the program, by the way, in the chat? Let me know, and I'll say hello. Um, okay. 
So we have a knife pickup variant hanging out right here. I'm going to remove any sort of animation from this. I don't want it rotating. So there's a rotate object script. We're gonna remove that. And I'm literally going to rotate the ax and have it sort of in the table like so. Just knock it on in like that. And the player is going to be able to press E on this ax and pick it up, okay? Kevin, <laughs> Kevin says, look at me. I bought it on day one. That's awesome, Kevin. Thanks for joining. Um, thank you so much. Oh, Zyre's in the program. That's awesome. Tug Mac, it is not 788. Goodness gracious. Okay, so we have a light here. Let's turn on our lighting and take a look. So this light here, we're actually gonna move it. Originally with the pickupable objects, that's hard to say. Originally <laughs> with the pickupable objects in this game, they're sort of rotating around like in Doom. But this one in particular, I want it to be sort of wedged into the table, okay? So we're gonna arrange the light so it's pretty obvious what you need to do here. to pick this up, okay? And let's go to the pickup itself. There it is, weapon pickup. Uh, and what we're gonna do is there is a requires interact button. Very good. So that should work. Um, I feel like what we need in here is some kind of torch or uh, even just a light, maybe a torch. You would never light a torch in a shed, would you? But I feel like we need something like that. Xander Will says, I'm in. It's worth the price of admission for the marketing segments alone. Thank you, Xander, for showing up. I paid for that review. Thank you so much. You can leave now. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like it because I my students usually show up during their live streams and they're always very supportive. So obviously I'm joking. Um, okay, let's see here. Maybe a lamp we can put in there. Felipe, I know. I know you want to do like custom models, but... I think candles are fine. We're gonna do candles. I don't do I have something else? Let's let's explore Eden Fell and see what we got here. We got torches. Yeah, I, I mean I I think that torches are probably our best bet here. Is this one lit? It is. Okay, so let's just copy this one here, and let's go back to Sodom's Hollow. Thomas is working copy. <laughs> Sander Fell says, not paid. Yeah, yeah but I, as always, guys, I really appreciate you be, being willing to listen to me do my ad reads for my program. It means a lot. Income comes in from a lot of different places in my life, and uh, one of them is, is making uh, online courses. Other ones are, see, that didn't paste. There it is, okay. One of them is online courses. Uh, sometimes we're, we're about to launch a new asset pack. Uh, for actually the asset pack that we used to create this game. That was made by AJ. I hired AJ to make that asset pack for me, and he and I are going to sell it on the asset store. Um, income comes from ads, Google ads. I actually I make about $900 a month from YouTube ads. Game sales, we're still, for some reason, making good money, really, really good money with... Uh, Zero, 540, there we go. Um, good money from Neversong and Pinstripe. Apple just featured Pinstripe, which was crazy because that game is really old. Um, but Apple featured it on the front page of their store, which was really cool. Uh, there's just a lot of places, guys. There's a lot of places that you can make income from as an indie game developer. It's not as um, cut and dry as you would think. It's definitely not, it, not anymore. It's not just, hey, let's sell copies of my game. It's no, let's, let's sell licensing deals to publishers, licensing deals to platforms. Um, so we're gonna put one out here and let's put one in here as well, just for now. Whoa, why did you fly so far away? That's a Hail Mary move is what that was. 
Anybody remember NFL Blitz? Did anybody play that game? That's what that just felt like, is a Hail Mary and NFL Blitz. I always thought it was so cool because I knew what a Hail Mary was in elementary school because I didn't watch football. This is going to burn down this shed, but I don't care. What is this? Okay, let's take a look at the lighting. Yeah, that's going to work. We're going to position it in such a way that it doesn't show up on the outside of the shed, hopefully. Hopefully not. Awesome. And now we have this beautiful little axe here. I'm of the opinion we might want to make it a little bit bigger. That's, that's my theory. So we're going to go a little bit bigger like this. Save it. Let's test it out. Thomas, what do you think about not safe for work games as an indie? Well, you guys know this. I'm a Christian, and I don't really think that stuff is good for people and their soul. I avoid it at all costs, as personally. I don't look at that kind of stuff. Um, so I wouldn't want to put it in, some, in front of anybody else because um, I just don't think it's good. So I don't... I think people should be able to do what they want. If they want to sell that kind of crap, they can sell that kind of crap. But I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't make it. I'm a big fan, guys, of letting people do what they want. If you want to be a moron with your life, go for it. Have fun. Enjoy your life. If you don't want to live a good life, a healthy life, whatever, it's your life. Go have fun. It's none of my business. That's my world. But unfortunately, that world seems to be going away, doesn't it, guys? Apparently, we have to be in everybody's business. All right, we got a torch there. That looks good. Um, you know, the particles are a little strange. They're like kind of appearing a little too high. So I'm actually going to go inside of the torch lit and just drop those down. So I'm going to pull them down to about right here. There we go. Oh, that's a lot better. F1 fan says, Thomas, you are right. Of course I'm right. There's too many lights in here. We don't need this one. We don't need, what is this? This is a baked one. That's for baking purposes. Yeah, it'd be good to have, honestly. And then this one flickers. Yeah, that one flickers. So it's going to look something like that. We could move it closer to the wall, obviously. Uh. Oh, dude, Jeffrey Miller. I've heard about the Mises Caucus. I, I, I have considered. you. Yeah, We probably think alike on a lot of things. I just like people being left alone. Leave me alone. And I'll leave you alone. How's that? <laughs> that's my, that's like kind of like my world view. You believe all the crazy stuff you want to believe, and I'll believe all the crazy stuff I want to believe. Okay, it's locked. Let's go ahead and grab that key. That looks good. It's a little high, but whatever. Let's burn the shed down. Um, Jeffrey Miller says, yeah, boy. <laughs> How do I join the Mises Caucus? All right, let's head on into the door and oh okay so i already have the axe so it's not going to show up so let's remove the axe from our inventory okay all right well the game a lot of you are saying man it's crazy how much the game has changed well, it's it's changed because it's well, it's all me, right, Felipe? It's all me. No, it's because I hired Felipe, who's a 3D modeler, and he's a brilliant, brilliant 3D modeler. He's done. He did all of this, guys. He did all of this. Everything you see in this shed, he's done. Now that we're using assets a lot, but but a lot of the stuff he hasn't. He ha he didn't use assets. 
All right, my friends, let's go into the player controller here and let's take a look at the player statistics. Uh, and we should be able to remove Wait, what? Oh, it's in the weapons controller. Um, so let's remove element zero. So the theory is, hopefully, Gordon, are you still in the chat, buddy? Thomas says, leave me alone, and his camera says, okay, I'll leave you alone. That's funny. Okay, so I don't have an ax. Okay, good, so let's go ahead and snag it. These, whoa. Snag, 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 snag. And we'll probably put a little UI element that says press E to pick up or something. Um, and let's head on over here. Open it up. There's our ax. I'm going to press E. Whoa. <laughs> What's going on? Why are you doing this? What's going on, man? Let's see here. That's a box collider. We can remove the rigid body. All right. Well, hey, that, that feels pretty good. I, I actually really like that we got that puzzle done. So that's good to go. Can I get a round of applause to Felipe? A round of applause to Gordon? Because he works on a lot of the interaction scripts. A round of applause to AJ. A round of applause to Hector for doing the sound. A round of applause to Adam. Did I already say Felipe? And obviously Chris, who's doing the music. We just can't hear it during this live stream. Way to go, everybody. Really, really good work. And a round of applause to you guys for supporting me through all of this and uh, my students who who are really supportive of me and encouraging to me during our mastermind meetings. Okay, let's see here. All of that is good to go. What's over here? This is not locked, apparently. Then what the F is this key for? Oh, it's locked here. So we're gonna need a blue key. So this is gonna be a blue key. But Harry, oh, you need the ax to get into here. So cool. Okay, so we need the ax to get into here. So the player, I love my life. What they can do is they can go over here and get lost and go, well, shoot, I need an ax to get inside. Brilliantly done, Adam. Way to go, buddy. Very, very good. Yoni says it would be really great to be able to break. Hey, you're right about that. You won't be able, I, the reason I made it so you can't break it is because I was like, well, I don't want to be able to break it and then the ax is floating. But you can't because you don't have the ax. So <laughs> let's bring these back. Very good. Thank you so much, uh, Yoni. Very, very good. We're going to revert. Revert. Oh, it depends on a rigid body, so we need a rigid body. Okay. Pushable object, revert. Revert. All right. That's fine. Yeah. Save the scene here. Um, anything else? Oh, yeah. So we're going to go over here, and this is... Whoa, it's too many woods here. And by the way, Felipe, if you're still in the chat, I'm not going to be pushing the terrain data. So you're not going to see all those trees. All right, this is locked. So we don't want this locked. This one is not locked. So what am I doing here? Hold on. I'm trying to figure out where I am. I'm kind of lost. Okay, yeah, yeah. So that's not locked. Uh, this door here isn't locked. It just can't be opened. Um, so I don't know what that means. <laughs> you know, um, we probably need bars or something. I don't know. That are just sort of locking the front door completely i don't know it feels feels a little weird doesn't it i'm not so sure what to do but these the key is going to be hanging out up oh, felipe way to go buddy so felipe he was smart he said you know what what if we made it so that we forced the player to go all the way up here and snag a key so let's grab the key that we were using um, copy or select it and then here's the blue one so we'll have a nice blue key over here just floating around, okay? This is going to be a new key, so let's go to our key manager. I wasn't looking for you, Gordon. You can go back to playing Kirby's Dreamland or whatever you play. 
but I'm happy that you're here. Uh, let's create a new Sodom's Hollow key. Copy that. Paste. See you later, Errols. Thanks for joining us. Um, it didn't. It didn't paste it. Paste. So I think we need to create a new one and then paste it. There we go. So this is going to be Sodom's Hollow. Blue key. Okay. It's going to have the same color of blue as this one. You really want to be consistent with your colors. You never want to pick random colors. It's going to have UI key of blue. You, I know you guys can't see it, but I've just created a new blue key in the key manager script. Yeah, the majority of the, the majority of the mods showing up today are all, all team members. Hector's the sound designer. Gordon Arbor's an intern who does a lot of the, uh, he's working on the menu system. Actually, guys, if you want to take a look at the menu system, let's, let's take a look at what Gordon's made. You ready, Gordon? Um, I'm good keeping, everything seems to be good here. Before we do that, um, really quick, let's just make sure that this is locked uh, and this puzzle's done. That's all we got to do. Uh, this is going to be Sodom's Hollow Blue Key. It's locked. That's that. Okay, so let's take a look at the menu system. Gordon, is it done? <laughs> How long do you think the game's going to be? Probably about five or six hours. So we have the father demo menu. Let's see if it works. It's okay if it doesn't work, Gordon. I know you've been really, really busy. Um, Gordon says, first of all, it's Yoshi's Crafted World. Second of all, how dare you? Feels really good, Gordon. We need to fix that, though. Hey, I think I need to do a pull request, don't I? Let's go to GitHub. Is that, we need to do a pull request? We need to fix that, though. Hey, I think I need to do a pull request. I'm going to head on over to github.com and see if we've got some pull requests from Mr. Gordon. Yes, we do. Okay. Yeah, I was like, the menu isn't fixed. Gordon, you're a fool. <laughs> Sodom's Hollow. I'm going to go to a new scene here so we don't get any weird stuff. Oh, good. No merge conflicts. So I'm going to I'm gonna merge in Gordon's changes here. I'm going to go ahead and pull from GitHub Desktop. I know you can't see my screen. Hold on, guys. I'm actually going to push. Shoot. I can't do a freaking pull because i got to push. Yeah. Everything else we should be good. Okay, I could push all this stuff. I'm basically what I'm looking at is the change log for the repo. I don't think there's anything in here that's gonna conflict with Hec uh, not Hector, uh, Felipe. Okay, so I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call this. I know you can't see my screen. Just give me a sec. Um, we're gonna we're gonna at least con commit the changes we've done here. So um, Sodom's Hollow puzzles. Work in progress. I'm gonna pull down Gordon's changes. Gordon, I hope you didn't put any dirty images in this menu like you did last time. I know you want it to be, you know, mature. Which it probably will be, to be honest, the game. All right, let's pull this down. By the way, guys, while we're waiting, does anybody have any questions for me? Thomas, did you learn 2D art or just had it? Well, it was a little mix of both. Um, it's still pulling. It was a little mix of both. I was born with pretty good sketching skill, like decent. It wasn't great. It was fine. Um, it's not really my sketching ability or like drawing ability that I feel is my forte. I think my forte is I, I'm really, really hypersensitive to bad visuals. So when something doesn't feel right visually, it bugs me, and it just it yeah, everything in life things bug me when they don't look good visually. So that ability to recognize flaws visually, obviously, is a blessing and a curse. But in game dev and in art, whether it's three D or two D, I can 
I actually do really well as an art director, I think, because I can say, you know, I don't like the way that looks. Let's change that, even though I couldn't probably do it myself, but I can at least direct what it should look like. Okay, um, we should be good here. Everything's pulled. Let's let Unity load. Yeah, I'm out of focus. Yeah. I really, really care about how things look. I'm really particular about how things look. The hypocrisy. All right, let's see the menu. Let's go. All right, so the menu system is super simple. Why? Because we're preparing a demo and we want it to be done. Um, so I believe, let's take a look what Gordon's done here. Yes. Okay, so it uses the keyboard too. Way to go, Gordon. Thank you. And this keyboard also means that uh, this functionality is using the new Uni Unity UI system, or I'm sorry, input system. So using a controller, like a Switch controller, Xbox, PS4, it doesn't matter. Up and down are all the same. Let's see if new game actually takes us to a new game. Okay, so the fader doesn't work. I don't know why the fader doesn't work. Gordon, do you know why the fader doesn't work? Polymar says, I really relate to that. I can't draw well, but I can tell when my drawings are ugly. <laughs> what did I ask for, Gordon? Um, very good, very good work, Gordon, but I don't know why it's not fading. That's fine, it's whatever. There's the crossfade, let's hit play. So it fades in, but it doesn't fade out. Oh well, Gordon will Gordon will fix it. He always he's always very uh, quick to fix things. All right, guys. Wow, that was really really fun. I think we got a lot done today, which is really really cool. Um, so w let's see here. I think, yeah, I think overall, guys. I think overall we're we're good to go here. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. For those of you who are interested in full-time game dev my program. This final ad read, <laughs> this final ad read is for you. If you're interested in the program, I think there's maybe two slots, maybe one slot left to get 50% off the program. This week is a special week because every every live stream I do, there's about five coupon codes available. So if you wanna snag one, grab one before they, they disappear by the end of the day. And honestly, they're probably gonna end, disappear in an hour. Um, if you wanna join the program, click the link below. Full-time game dev is pretty awesome. We've got great reviews. Somebody asked me yesterday, they said, Thomas, are all the reviews five stars? No, we've got Marcos, he gave us a four and a half. Dang it, Marcos. No, he gave us four and a half, but everybody else has given five stars. I haven't seen a really bad review. The only bad review I got was this week, and it was zero stars because one of my students decided to steal the program and upload it to udemy.com, and so I banned that student. <laughs> and he left me a bad review. Uh, saying, Thomas banned me for no reason. No, dude, you stole my program. So that's that's full disclosure. Um, but the majority, of, all of them basically are five-star reviews, very happy. And in fact, I actually really love to brag here. One of my students, uh, I think it was last two weeks ago, uh, on the Discord server, he posted this, which is so cool. He said, about a year ago, I had no idea how to use Unity, and today we just hit $100,000 on Kickstarter. So surreal, thank you so much, Thomas Brush. I am officially a full-time game dub. And he said, what is real life even? Thomas Brush's course works. And the reason why it works, guys, is because we cover all this stuff. You know, We cover shortcuts on your game dev journey that you can take, how to power through self-doubt, what are the secrets in raising $100,000 on Kickstarter, and here's the important part, before you even finish your game, obviously. How do you do that? Um, how do you make your, make your game's sucky art actually look gorgeous with just some good color theory? Um, how do you secure $60,000 in funding without even finishing your game? I'd go so far as to say six figures. I actually raised over uh, over six figures in funding um, with publishers before I even finished my game. Um, how do you get attention from YouTubers, from press? And how exactly do you have a profitable Steam launch? How do you hit the Steam front page? Guys, I've done all this stuff. Um, if you need the proof, it's right here. <laughs> um, but I've done all this stuff and, and obviously I can't make any promises. But what I can do is I can record a 30 hour course for you and tell you how to do it. Um, on top of all of this marketing stuff and business ownership stuff, you're also gonna learn how to make a game, how to make a 2D game, how to make a 3D game, how to code, how to do artwork, 
how to asset flip, how to make a game with no code. I teach all the different methods. Um, and best part, I think, private Discord server. And I know it sucks that it's private, um, but it really doesn't suck for the people inside because, I mean, obviously, but because when there's a paywall and, and you actually get into the, 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 the server, the private server, it, it really is incredible because everybody's, everybody's like really focused on making games. Like that is their dream and, and they're all focused and they're so helpful. Um, rarely do we have to have the mods do anything, so it's really great. Anyway, guys, I appreciate you listening to these ad reads this week. This week is a unique week because I'm doing these ad reads, but I appreciate it. It supports the channel, helps me make games, but also, more importantly, investment for you. So I will talk to you guys later. This was so fun today. I will see you tomorrow. Take it easy. Cheers. Get over here. Get down. Hey, thanks for watching. By the way, if you haven't downloaded that free 2D game kit below, click below, it's my treat to you. I used this game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days, and I actually got to play it with him in front of his audience, which was really cool. This game kit is totally free. It's my treat to you, and you can use it however you want. You can make a commercial game and make a million bucks off this game kit. I don't care. Or you could just use it for a hobby project. It's my treat to you. And by the way, if you haven't clicked like, that would mean a ton to me, hit subscribe, and also, this is important, hit that notification bell, here's why. If you get notified of when I'm live, you can watch me make my next game and let me know in the chat what you think about the game or any ideas you have and you might just show up, your chat might just show up in the next video that I upload. All right, I'll talk to you later, bye.